Well, good evening and welcome back to the Andy Holding Speed Figures uh, vlog. And uh, looking back on day three of the Cheltenham Festival, it was another good day to be Irish with uh, Nicky Henderson seeming to be our only line of defence. Um, that was the only blemish on the Irish card with Envoy Allen taking an early fall, uh, leaving Nicky Henderson's Chantry House to lead home a 1-2 for the stable. Um, her attempts, Mrs Milner, repeated the same turn of foot that had seen her finish second to on the blind side of the November meeting and ran away with the per attempts. And the performance of Alaho was absolutely outstanding. At first glance, at first glance, the overall time is, is absolutely off the scale. Um, just as an indication, it beat the shun to buy as much as nine seconds over the same course and distance. What an outstanding performance. Uh, Flora and Porter pretty much repeated the dose and made all in the stayers hurdle and never really looked like being pegged back. As hard as um, the field tried, um, only side of Verle looked as if he was ever, ever going to get near the Gavin Cromwell trained horse. Uh, the shunter was an easy winner, and tell me something, girl, uh, sprouted wings running to the last and, and claimed mare's race. And then the last race, Mount Ida pro produced an absolutely outstanding performance, and just as to illustrate how far she was behind, there was a £100 done at the maximum on Betfair. So there's, there's a few punters out there who have uh, shut down the computers for the night thinking, uh, what on earth have I finished with? Um, all in all, Andy, a good day for the Irish. Yeah, yet again, Andy, yeah. I mean, it was a, a case of a uh, referee coming to stop the fight. wasn't after day two, to be honest. Um, and, yeah, they've just dished out more punishment. The bookmakers are in tatters. It's a good job there's not any bookmakers at Cheltenham today because I think they'll still be paying out now. Um, you know, one gamble after another on popular horses. Well, the shunt has very much become a public horse, Curtis, if he's winning the more battle in the Greatwood. Um Good money for Rachel Blackmore's horse as well in the mares. That was a snowball effect after she'd ridden um, um, Alaho to victory, as you mentioned, in a very fast time. And then just to put the tin hat on it, uh, for the bookmakers, Mount Ida lands the punt of, of the day, one of the punts of the day, 10 to 1 into 4 to 1. They just get piling it on into 3 to 1 in the end. Um, and as you say, looked as though the uh, it's the god, the the, the Bookmaking gods were going to come into its favour, having been absolutely tailed off halfway through, only to steam home and win on the bridle. Uh, very similar to what Chosen made in last year's Grand Annual. So, um, an absolute disaster for bookmakers, great for punters. And equine stars, where do you start? I mean, Alaho was definitely the pick. We certainly suggest that that is one of the best races on that on the time figures. Um, I was really impressed with the way the Shunter got the job done. And you've got to give a bit of credit to Chantry House as well, who took advantage, obviously, of the five-bit falling, but he still had to go and do it. And, um, you know, he he, he, got, he come, he come mm -hmm. home in a one-two for Nicky Henderson. So a little bit of cheer for, for the UK horses. Yes, yes. So rolling on, fourth and final day. Yeah. Uh, the normal curtain raiser to Gold Cup day, the uh, triumph hurdle. Um, Zana here, now as short as even money in places. Are you with him or against him, Andy? I'm certainly not against him in a major way. Um, I was going to put up Calixios each way. I mean, looking at the prices yesterday, uh, we were looking at sort of nine to two, uh, which would have been a lovely bet with the dead eight runners, given what figures we've got. We've obviously got Zana here with a 74 and Calixios right behind him with a 73. So they're very difficult to split on our numbers. So therefore, the value is definitely with Calixios. He still arguably is at three to one, just about. Um, it looks a two-horse race between the two. I, I don't really fancy Tritonic, even though he was very impressive on the eye in the Adonis. But he's got quite a bit to find. Don't think the strength of the UK um, juveniles is good enough. And given as well that there's the powerhouses of um, Denise Foster and of course um, Henry de Bromhead, um, you know, it, it, it makes sense to look towards the, the, that that kind of that that those um, stables that are absolutely in the ball out of the park and just doing extraordinary things. So. I'd expect these two to pull clear to fight it out. Um, and as I said, just for just for betting purposes anyway, the three to one is, is definitely the way to go with Calixios. Yeah, it has to be said, that Sunday Leopardstown card is producing a fair few winners at uh, this year's festival with Appreciate It. Yeah. Uh, Heaven Help Us, which is uh, probably what the bookmakers are thinking. Um, and then obviously today with Tell Me Something Girl, I know Mrs Milner fell in her respective race, but uh, she was still she was still on that card. Well, Calixios was best better better than those two 
Overall, and on the on the set, I mean, he would have been appreciated by ten lengths, wouldn't he? But using yeah. the circuit sectionals as a guide, so they've come and won. So if Kilix just runs up to the form that they have, he's he's going to be right in the mix. Yeah, it should be a, an interesting battle. The uh, speed of Zama here against the staying power of uh, Quicksilver. Yes. Yes. Uh, Thirty-five minutes later, it gets a shade more difficult with a maximum twenty-six going to field for the County Hurdle. How do you see this one, Andy? Well, exposed novices, really, Andy, to be honest, is the order of the day, like it has been all week with the hurdles and the chases. Um, I want to be on something that's lightly raced. Uh, Champagne Gold comes into that category. Obviously, needs no second introduction, being a Rachel Backmore ridden uh, Henry de Bromley train horse. He had his first taste of uh, handicap company last time at the Leopard Stand. He travelled like the best horse, got to the front, and he's gone clear with uh, 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 Drop the Anchor, but Drop the Anchor has just outstayed him probably because he had a bit more know-how, if you like, and he handled the soft ground better. But being by Sunday presenting, you'd expect the better ground to suit Champagne Gold. So he might be able to turn the tables on his old rival. Uh, and the other one to mention is 50 Ball, who represents strong UK form, having finished second in the Betfair Hurdle, equivalent race to this, strong gallop, good ground. Um, he started his run right the way back through the pack, and he managed to work his way through to the front, travelling well at the last only to get done by the more uh, prominently ridden story in glory, who... Pulled his chances away, really, in the Supremes. He couldn't really use that as a guide of, of, the, of the form as such. He still went okay, so in glory. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think I think if you back those two each way, you can get sort of 13 to 2, 5, 6 places for Champagne Gold, 14 to 1. You can even get 14 to 1, 8 places for 50 ball, which looks an amazing price. Um, I, I'd be quite happy with those two. They're, they've got consistent profiles, and they're running the right races coming into the race, and they come out well on the figures. Yeah, they're certainly the uh, the two uh, predominant handicaps on the either side of the Irish Sea, the uh, race yeah. at Newbury and Leopardstown. So, uh, yeah. um, the second of the Grade Ones uh, is up next. The uh, stay in novices. Is there a monkfish in the field today, Andy? Um, not to say that, but I think Fakir has a, a, a got the right profile. Um, he, he's always looked as though he wants three miles or further than what he's been tackling two and a half. He ran well beyond Galibier de Mesnil last time out doing his best work at the end. Similar comments the time before in a, in a good race uh, behind Ashdale Bob. Um, I think the better ground will suit him as well. And even though he'll probably be off the bridle at some stage, he does stay on very strong. Um, so I, I'd go with him as a, as, the, as the number one choice. Uh, you'll notice that three under through five is at the top of our figures as well, courtesy of a, a good win last time out at Musselburgh. The second horse um, of Nodger Twist and Davis who's won at Fontwell the other day. And um, he was really good the time before when he beat a nice horse of Alan King's Valerius at Ludlow on good ground. That's another point to make. He, he has got some good ground form. Stepping up to three miles definitely did for him last time out. He was, he was good over that, that trip. Um, so, yeah, he, he comes here with a, with a lightly raced profile as well. So, again, two against the field for Kira, five to one, and you can get 11 to one for three under three, five. Yeah, the, the secret to three and the three five. He has quickened up very nicely, hasn't he, in two of those performances. Lud yeah. Ludlow been a sharp track and Musselburgh. So uh, if it comes down to a race of speed, then he's certainly he's certainly well equipped to uh, to uh, put a fast finish in. Um, then on to the main event of the week. And I believe that um, uh, you're going to highlight one for Selector here. Yeah, I think uh, Flutard is the one we're going to go with. Um He's top of the numbers based on that run uh, in the Savile's Chase, which is a savage gallop. The race couldn't have worked out any better. You know, Ken Boy won next time out. Alaho won the, the Ryanair uh, this afternoon. And Pluto was very strong in the finish, wasn't he? There's always been a, um, a conjecture of what trip he, he actually does want. Does he want two, two and a half? Well, they tried him over three and it worked um, in um, spectacular fashion, didn't he, at Leopardstown? He was going on really strong through the line. He hit the line the hard. Extra two furlongs shouldn't be a problem. Obviously, the yard's in great, Nick. Everyone can see that. Rachel's riding with tons of confidence. She can put him basically anywhere in the race because he's got two and a half mile tactical speed. He's never been out of the frame in his life. So if he jumps a clear round, he should be bang there. You can get sort of still th the embers of three to one are floating around for him, uh, which looks in, in the scheme of things not a bad price given that our figures are very much pointing in his direction as well as the trainer form. So let's keep it simple with the selector this time with a Plotard in the Gold Cup. Yeah, he did. Uh, he did fantastically well in that race at Leopardstown to close the gap when there was actually nothing else to take him to uh, to Kenboy and and, and Mellon, uh, and then slightly slow at the last, he still found another gear on the running, didn't he? He kind of like it yeah. happened twice in the race, which uh, which is the mark of a of a, of a proper Gold Cup horse, isn't it? So yeah, things start to wind down then with the uh, the Gold Cup for amateurs. 
but with professional jockeys riding, any any view on the uh, on this year's Fox Hunters? Not a massive one, Andy. You know, um, Billaway set a standard, but the ground might, might be a little bit sharp for him. Um, I, I'd probably, if I was play spotting, I'd probably put the two end of balls your horses in, stake a Wallace and stand up and fight. Stand up and fight. Fucked a good time at um, Thurley's last time out behind jury duty, and he came from a long way back. And he was six in this race last year. Um, best of the best of the UK horses might well be Shamaron, a very lightly raced horse who posted a good number at Leicester last time out. A, a race that was eleven seconds quicker on the final circuit than um, the, the, the next division. And a horse out of that next division um, went on to win a Stratford the other day. So. The form of, of those two races has always been has already been represented. Um, so yeah, that Shamron's quite a nice horse, but yeah, not a race I'm going to have a, a, a major interest in, um, other than play spot. So yeah, Stake a Wallace, Stand Up and Fight Shamron will be my three. I'd probably pick out of there. Okay, and uh, the the introduction of the new mare's chase certainly with the performance of Alaho looks at the mercy of Ellie May. A- anything to oppose the favourite? Not really, Andy, no. Maybe shattered love each way. I think Cool Reeve is better off going right-handed. Quite surprised that she's lining up here. Um, I mean, Ellie Mays, she's been back to all rates, hasn't she? I think she was 5-6 to 1 just after third is when, when she got beat by Alaho. She's been in free fall since, but she's a no-bet now, 4-5. to five. Uh, Yeah, I, I, it's one of those races I'll probably just skip and, and watch, um, similar to something like the, the Marsh Joes today. OK, and then... Just before we start looking forward to next year's festival, we've got the uh, getting out stakes, the 24-runner conditional jockeys handicap hurdle. And uh, how, how do you see this uh, difficult race panning out? Yeah, again, lightly raced Irish horses are the ones to concentrate on here. Willie Mullins, um, very much the number one uh, trainer in regards to this race. He's got two lively ones here. Got a gentleman to me who skipped a victory last time out quite a quick time at Nace. He, he looks the number one choice. But he's also a gallop and a champion in this race as well, who... Uh, was no match for appreciate it last time out at, at Leopardstown, but he went well, went well for a long way. If he gets the trip, he could be dangerous. But my number one choice from the Irish uh, contingency would be Gabby Nacko. Gavin Cromwell, of course, had the winner with uh, Florian Porter today, uh, which was a timely boost for his start. But they are coming back into form, and Gabby Nacko is running some really good, strong run, quality two and a half mile rate graded races so far this season. They then dropped him back in trip last time out in that race one by dropped the anchor, and he made a horrendous blunder at the second. I don't know how he stayed on his feet, but his race was run right on the spot. If you if you strip that off his dance card and look at all his other previous form, it stands up to very close inspection. He'll like the strongly run race. And, um, yeah, he, he he makes plenty of appeal. So I'd probably throw two darts at the board there, maybe mainly with Gabby Nacko, but um, a little small saver on, on Gallup under Chomp. Yeah, wasn't that wasn't that the bottom of the race that he ran in at, um, the, at Nace? Yes, he ran beyond Bob Ollinger and he ties in with... You know, your Fakiras and your Bob, and your Ashdale Bobs of this world. So, very, very strong profile, uh, Gabby Nacko. Yep. OK. Fantastic, Andy. Well, listen, no thanks problem. very much for all the hard work this week. And let's hope we uh, we finished day four as we have gone through days one, two and three. And um, we can then start looking forward to next year's festival. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and in between, there's a small matter of Aintree and Punchestown as well, Andy. Oh, yeah. And there's a fairy house on the horizon. It just and never fairy stops. As well, yeah. It never stops. So... For all those who have joined us for the festival, we've got plenty more coming up over the next few weeks. And that's that's just before we start on the flat racing and, and start building up towards Ascot and the Derby. So we're, we're always here and we're always pushing speed figures, information and the best advice possible out to all of our subscribers. Thanks very much and enjoy Gold Cup Day. Cheers, Andy.